in the biggest decision since LeBron decided to go to Miami, Jelani Cambridge has decided, and as expected, I have no idea and am certainly not the smartest man in the world. As I said, LSU, and she has decided to go to the Ohio State University. In this video, we will review Jelani's decision and go through a few bits and pieces that have come up from other videos and comments. So anyway, if you like the content, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Your feedback and poison is always welcome. Now, first and foremost, all sarcasm aside, congratulations to Jelani Cambridge for making her decision, and I, I think she's made, actually, a really good choice in the university that she has chosen. One thing that I obviously did not take into account in the previous video, and a few pointed this out straight away, and I was like, damn, I forgot to mention that, is that her sister, Kennedy Cambridge, she transferred from Kentucky after her freshman year to Ohio State. Now, I knew this because I did an initial uh, preview video on Ohio State, so I knew that, but I don't know why I didn't mention it. But that was a great point by those guys. I think it was like User, I think Calvin and Anthony, they all mentioned that. And I was like, damn it. So good job by you guys putting the pieces of the puzzle together much better than me. Honestly, the sister aspect is huge. Like, if you're not aware, Sienna Betts has decided to join her sister Lauren Betts at UCLA. And it just makes sense because you can get your family member to give you intel on the program and what it's really like. As in a lot of ways, these recruiting visits are a lot like teacher parent night. Now, I remember in the third grade, my mom met with Mrs. Kylie, my third grade teacher, and she was like, man, she is so wonderful and lovely and nice. And I remember thinking, man, my mom just got snowed because Miss Kylie was crazy as a rat and was holding on by a thin thread every day as she was losing her mind. And with this, a lot of the recruiting visits remind me of that parent teacher night as they are so superficial these visits and that came out to me when I watched the uh, video of Cambridge going to Baylor and I thought the interaction between Nikki Cullen and Cambridge's mom it, it just seemed I mean it, she was nice she didn't do anything wrong but I think some of these coaches have it where they're able to relate to the parents and kids straight away, like on the men's side, I think Calipari can do it. I think obviously Don Staley has that gift as she can relate back to her times and playing days and the different players that she has coached. I think Mulkey is great at it because she uses her folksy charm. And then Gino has a massive advantage because he says, just look at my resume. Do you want to be the next star that comes out of UConn? Like the others I've produced, I might be an a-hole, but I make good basketball players at UConn. Now, obviously, I wanted my video to be right and for her to go to LSU on some level, but on a pure basketball level and screwing players, I think going to Ohio State is a really good thing because if she went to LSU, somebody was going to get screwed, whether that be... Angelica Velez or as well Jada Richard, the point guard they signed this year. They were all approximately the same size. So they're that 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and, and fast little point guards. And the, the math just did not work. You, you normally have one spot for those on the court and three players vying for that position. And that's not even, you know, looking at if HVL decides to come back next year or not. So it was definitely a crowded backcourt and somebody was going to get screwed out of time. And I guess this goes back a little bit to the transfer portal, in my opinion. I am pro transfer portal and transfer as many times as you want, as these coaches can move as much as they want and they can bring in players at any time. So they'll make promises promises to the player. Hey, you're 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 my girl. You'll run the point and then they get a wandering eye. 
you know, the top recruit from the next class is coming in and we'll bring them in, which I understand people would say that's competition, that's sport. You just have to wear it and do it. But I'm of the opinion opinion that no, you don't. If, if there's a spot for you to play at another school to better yourself, you don't owe the program anything, especially if they're going to bring in another player. And in some ways, this goes back to HVL and her leaving Louisville. When they, and I, I still think in my mind that that basically came down to they brought in Jada Curry, and she was like, no, nah, you got to be kidding me. It was my chance or my time to run the point to prepare for the next level, and you're going to bring in Jada Curry and keep me at off guard. Now, with that being said, it was interesting to hear Mulkey in a press conference say, yeah, we're, we're going to, at some point, HVL will be playing some off guard and doing some playmaking as you know we'll just mix and match at times but she is our point guard she emphasized that but at the same time but at the same time she knows that hvl's best position is at the off guard spot and playmaking and holds the or reserves a right to put her in there at times to maximize louisville's potential and firepower now, just looking back on some of my recent videos, especially the top five coaching video, which got a lot of feedback. As suspected, I got crushed for putting Corey close number three. And to be honest, I think the commenters had it right. I think she was too high on that list. And I think I might have gotten the wrong coach on the West Coast. My main reason for putting close on there is I just wanted to, wanted to point out that UCLA is coming and they are a building power, but between USC and UCLA, I wonder if USC is the team to really look out for, which ties into them playing this weekend, which should be a great matchup. And then by accident, I got into a deep dive on Lindsay Gottlieb and yeah, she's impressive in terms of how she has developed through her career, how she knew what she wanted to be early on. And yeah, I, 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 if I had my time over again, I'd be more happy with choosing, uh, I, I guess, Lindsay Gottlieb, who hasn't done much as well as the number three coach than Corey Close. And in truth, I probably didn't explain the video very well. I was trying to say, who would you you know, who would you buy stock in in the next 15 years? And I was trying to say that UCLA, I would buy more stock in that program than Stanford or UConn at this stage right now, looking at it. In that video as well, it just got too long, but at the end, I was going to throw flowers at Vic Schaefer as well, Neil Ivy, saying how they just missed out more. I wanted to put a light on uh, Neil Ivy. Because uh, as well, at the same time, Muffet McGraw, because I think she did a really good transition out. And that is the big fear with UConn. Who will take over once Gino retires? And will it be a smooth transition? Or is it going to be like a Tennessee situation when Pat Summit had to retire, unfortunately? Been doing some reading on Muffet McGraw. The more I read about her, the more I like her. I, I like that she took on Gino head to head and just didn't take a backward step as well. I love the fact when she talked about how she decided to switch to just hiring female assistant coaches. And some will say, well, that's discrimination. How can you do that? And it's like, come on. You know, there are only so many coaching jobs and females very, very rarely, I know you'll point out Gottlieb, but very rarely have a chance to get a male assistant job like in a on a male team. And I, I just think the opportunities are so limited for female coaches that really when you give one of those jobs to a male coach like a Gary Ritas, who's great, I understand it. You want to give the job to the best coach possible. But when you give that to a Gary Ritas, you're really stealing uh, a, a chance away from a potential female basketball coach. One thing in that video I will not take a backward step on is I still say Don Staley is the number one coach right now. How she has built that program is damn impressive and I think she deserves all the accolades in the world and I will hold that position. I don't care what others say. Now the last video posted recently was the point guard video of the 2023 class. I think most of the feedback on that seems to be in agreement that 
Hannah Hidalgo is the number one point guard. And it will be a fairly tight race in the future to see who becomes the number one point guard out of those two. I think most not one-eyed fans agree with that. It seems like the biggest area of disagreement in that video is me putting KK Arnold number two for this season over Malaysia Fawaili. And really the reason for that is she's getting more minutes and their numbers are fairly similar. I mean, I know Fawaili is putting up more numbers and less minutes, but I just don't know if she's going to get the opportunity that KK is going to continue to get. Some say that uh, Staley will increase her minutes as the season goes along. I, I'm not so sure. Like, I, I thought last year, Raven Johnson should have gotten more time prior to the tournament, and it never really eventuated. I, I think Don likes playing experienced players and slowly breaking in the freshmen, which I think will continue. And, and that's really the reason I have put KK in front of uh, Full Wiley for this season. But, hey, time will tell. You know, maybe she'll have a big showing as the season continues to progress and get more and more minutes, or maybe not. Anyway, your comments, your poison, it's always welcome. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great night.